Good morning guys, welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill. I'm Sandra. <laughs> he laughs every time I do that now. <laughs> it is stupid o'clock. Um, to give you a little preview. It's stupid o'clock in the morning. Minus two degrees. Somebody's just got in the car and done nothing but moan. I'm going to give them the rundown just show them yet. I just gave him a list on what I got on. <laughs> <laughs> I said I got two pairs of trousers on, I got a vest top on, I got a normal top on, I got a jumper on, I got a coat. <coughs> and he said to me, you promised I wouldn't, you wouldn't moan. We weren't expecting to be this cold. <laughs> but I assure you, she said you're a lot worse than that. <laughs> yeah, I'm being polite now. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, she's being polite now because the camera's on, guys. Um, but yeah, all in all, it's a dry day. Very cold, uh, minus three a minute now. Um, was supposed to be five o'clock in the morning, but I think it's more ten past quarter past now. Oh, shoot me! <laughs> I'm a girl. Come on, girls. You know what it's like to get ready. Come on, give it to me, like I had to brush my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're off to Bessemer Road uh, first this morning. Um, we're going to see how we go get off in Bessemer till about 9 o'clock. And I if, go home. If I buy enough of Bessemer, then we will uh, call it a day there. If not, then we may go down to Bridgend, car boot sale, or certainly over to Splot. Splot's Ooh. only just across the way. There's market and uh, the odds house clearance in there, so we might get a couple of bits in Splot. Like on spot. We could also go uh, from over. No, it's right. I'm excited about Splot. <laughs> Have a look where the auction got. Ah no, last time I went over there, I wanted that chain. At <laughs> point, I just can never buy out of it. At least if I go to a book sale. can't just leave a book bed. Oh, at least if I go to a book sale, I can buy it and that. I don't like doing bids. So there's a few options today. Um, as you saw in the shop, I, uh, I took a lot of the expensive things out of the shop this week and changed it all to lower priced you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 pound items. And I'm pleased to say, even though I was very dubious taking the de de ex no, the expensive pieces out, it did work. Sales doubled this week, or takings doubled this week, sales really went up. Obviously I got to sell more of the smaller items to make the same money, but I see I, it happened. <coughs> but that has a knock on effect, because now today I have to go out and uh, buy and I have to sort the stock out at home to take down the shop. But I'm not complaining one way or the he other. It sound like he was complaining and did he have to go out this time in the morning, freezing? I love doing this. This is through choice. I could win the lottery tomorrow or I'd be down the boot sale. Do you harp something about this all the time? I don't believe it. No, I'm joking. The Grace Hood sent me a picture last night and his hair was sticking up everywhere. So oh, look at it. It still is. It's really yeah. it probably is still here. Really. I haven't been brushed this morning, I'm just going to put my um, Indiana Jones hat on. No, it's too cold for that. You need a bobble hat. <laughs> I need something. I need a new brain to be able to miss. <laughs> oh, um, cold. So yeah, um, wasn't complaining guys. It's really good that I have to go out and replace the stock so fast. And if I have another week like last week, I'll be jumping up and down. You see me doing a jig on the dinner. <laughs> In the, in the shop window. He didn't dance. actually do his thousand um, jig, did he? No, I done a competition video instead. She wanted me to run around the town pretty much naked, guys. It would be fabulous. I would be filming like that. Would have yeah. blocked out all certain areas and all your buffer <coughs> out of that, but uh, yeah, I would have paid to have seen that. Trust me, guys, you do not want to see the truffle shuffle running around my <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I told him to do the truffle shuffle. Ah, uh, so. Yeah, it's. Um, I'm super excited. Let's go see what we uh, we get. I got a pocket full of cash today, and I'm off out. I'm hoping for a bit of silver, a bit of gold, and a glass Sunday. Certainly some, some cheaper end antiques. But the best part about the cheaper end antiques, guys, is they come in for a pound or two. You don't really have to pay that much for a nice quality uh, bit of collectible. All right, they're not antique. 
uh, majority of them, you know, like Edinburgh Crystal decanters and things. I had them last week or the week before. Was last week or the week before I had them decanters, probably two. Well, you know, me, so it must have been the week before. But apparently, I don't go anywhere. <sighs> apparently, she wakes up in a mood, guys. I'm not in the mood. I just want to turn to brush my teeth. Everybody's got a garble. I'm not gonna bite. So all I wanted to do was brush my teeth. How many teeth you got? What are you, an elephant? I don't think elephants have got that many teeth. Well, they got lots of ivory though. Yeah, uh, but I don't see them running okay. round. I mean, you eat Madagascar. Uh, <laughs> I don't uh, see them running round brushing their teeth. Until we get on the best one, then you can tell me that. Pardon? That's it. Right, guys, um, I think we're gonna leave it there for a couple of minutes. If I think of anything else to say before we get into uh, Bessemer, I'll switch you back on. If not, we'll give you a little look-see once we arrive in Bessemer Road. We'll probably switch it all back on now, guys, at the moment. We're just like, eh, well, I yeah. am, anyway. Just woke up, don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, still got a cold. Uh, oh, it's been lagging. Do you know, it ain't even a cold anymore. It's just a sympathy cough. It's been lagging for three weeks now, guys. I'm so sick of having a cold, I tell you. But you have to just work through it. When you're self-employed, guys, and you think it's easy, trust me, you don't know, you ain't allowed sick days. Oh no. You gotta get up, even when you don't want to, and go. See the dig at me, I'm just yeah. I'm brushing my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you soon guys. Bye! <laughs> okay guys, so uh, we've arrived at arrived at Besma. It's still minus one. Let's see if I can get that for you. So it's still minus one, and as you can see, I still haven't sorted my clock out from when uh, the car battery died a month ago. <laughs> it's not tw uh, 20 past 10 at night, I promise. It is nice and early. Six, six twelve. So we just sat there at the moment with the engine running. Let's give you a little look around, is it? It's Keith. So, we have house clearance van there. We have a couple of dealers over by there. They haven't got out the car yet. And that is all we have in the entire of Bessemer Road, all on apart from Happy by there. Look, see Happy. Hi. Hello. Well, my Christmas jumper on, look. That she had off me, might add. Guys, I don't care about Bessemer. I remember the tragedy. I've lost a gold earring. It fell out of my ear. However. It's gone. Oh, that's the new keys. Just However, out of the darkness comes the light. That means I get the other one. Right, bloody well done. I'm hoping the other one's going to turn up eventually in 2028 or something. Who's going to have the, uh, the single earring? You, if it comes to it. Look, I've had to buy a pair of... Excuse me, camera on the ear. I've had to buy a pair of studs locked to an Absolutely devastated. Really sad. And the best thing about it, the worst thing about it is, right, is he haven't even got another gold earring to give me out. No, I haven't. Not what I want, anyway. I'm going to go and see Linda and Keith now, now, anyway. Linda and Keith are over there in the van. They're about to set up, and I do have quite a bit off those. Silver, coinage. They, I had the bayonet off them the other week. So I'm going to have a little look around, guys, and then I'll get back to you. And we'll, since we're in parked inside today, we'll give you a little look as the day goes on. Sounds good to me. So, as usual, I'll see you later. Jeff should be going like that, or shouldn't I throw the video as Bunny Rabbit? Well, I should. Bye for now, guys. Look, 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 guys. Ta da! It's flat. Perfection. Oh, we should actually splice that uh, picture on, shouldn't we? No. Oh. Okay, guys, so. I just went over and saw my. Uh, he didn't even give me a chance to fix my hair. Friends over there now. Uh, and I've had some silver coinage. Um, already, it's not all solid. It's uh, some of it's the half silver, and I've had a silver thimble um, and a charm. So I'll show you them you now. Well on your trousers, mind you. No, I've no. You are now. Use your torch and give me some light. Okay. Please. Ah, oh, God, it's cold. Right. So 
as you can see, little silver thimble. I'll show you these tidy in the house anyway, guys. And we've had a variety of coins from a threepence all the way up to a half crown. The half crown is full silver, the rest of it is half silver, and the charm is silver. So I've had those all in for the same cost as the rest of it. I'm going to show you in just a minute. Come here with me. Oh. As you know, I like bits of silver. Um, coins anyway, I love coins, as you know. Linda wasn't that keen on selling them, to be honest with you. But Keith said no, sell them. I paid £20 for a box full. That was the only silver in the box. Then I got a nice little silver plate cigarette box. And the contents, the contents. Do you want to use your torch again for me? Okay. And there we have the contents. Now that's a really nice early key. That's a good Victorian key. Um, and there we have, you know, the odd little commemorative medal. And a load of half crowns and these little jubilee crowns. You know, that I can sell on for a couple of pound each or a pound each. That one's a little bit better. 1953 probably. They usually are. So, I paid £20 for the box full. I've taken the silver out of it. The box isn't uh, hallmarked. Don't worry guys, I did check. It would have been nice. Um, so, yeah. Box and contents, £20. So you can see now why we get down here early. You have to be down here early because the deal is a year and, well, as you saw, what's the time now? It's 6.28. Sean. Oh, sorry. It's not like you was. It is. Close it. And just press this one. 6.28. So we got you at about 11 minutes past. It's half, it's not even half past, so not 20 minutes have gone. 15, 20 minutes have gone and I've already had a really good buy that's covered the day. I haven't been outside the car. And Sandra hasn't left the car. Oh, guys, it's freezing out there. Let's see what temperature is here. It is zero, guys. It's at oh, no, one. no, no. It's minus one again. It's still minus one. Is it? Yep. Minus one. And that's without any <coughs> wind blowing at me or anything. On the For everybody that's overseas, that is degrees Celsius above Fahrenheit. So it's bloody cold. <laughs> really cold. But... We'll go down to Penarth later and Sandra's going swimming for you. <laughs> <laughs> you can see right that happening, can't you? Yes, of course, yeah. <laughs> so, I think I'm going to chuck a jumper on under this coat because it is bitter. Do you want my jumper? No, I got one in the car. I'll go see you off with my penguin jumper, guys. Look. Ah, uh, isn't it cute? It's a hell of an improvement, I must admit. Oh! <laughs> So yeah, uh, cars are starting to come in now. Let's give you a little look-see. Uh, some cars coming in. Not loads, but there is starting to be a bit of activity down you now, half past six. I predict some good buy-in today. There's not a lot of dealers walking around at the moment. It's still early, but there's not a lot of dealers here yet. So I do predict a good day today. Good. Fingers crossed. I'm already pleased with the box and contents. Um, silver will be separated, sell the silver separate. The little thimble will go out, you know, five or ten quid. The box will go out for ten quid. What about the key? The key will go out for five or ten pounds. It's a really nice key. I'll double my money on the uh, on the contents, no problem whatsoever. I'll probably have a little bit of scrap silver to go in the tin. So, to be honest with you, I don't mind that. Uh, it's playing fair to them. I've got to double my money on everything I buy, guys. Uh, otherwise, I just don't cover the costs. Can you, I was just going to say, knock it off. It's blowing cold air up here. Whoa. So, if I can't double my money minimum, it's just no point me doing it. Uh, because of the costs, the cost of the shop, the cost of fuel, the cost of time, and so forth. The cost of spending any time with me. That's priceless. Better be. <laughs> anyway. Um... Uh, so yeah, uh, I look at that, uh, that's going to be a comfortable £40 by there, no problem at all. I'm going to acid test the box and if it turns out to be silver I will 
actually give little Keith another 20 quid. It's no silver, guys. Look at you being optimistic, don't you? It ain't. How do you know? Because <laughs> I can tell. How can you tell? Just by looking at her. I'm that good. <laughs> I'm going to acid test the box. If it's silver, I'll chuck him another 20 quid, to it be honest with you. Uh, likely it is a silver plate, and it was bought as plate. I'm just having a little check of the uh, button because sometimes they hallmark it on the button. It's no brass throwing sh showing through, see? Yeah, it's not on the side, boy. No, it just needs cleaning. I'll tease him now. I'll look at the box when he's out having a look around. I'll go, I found a stamp! <laughs> I think a silver plate. It looks silver plate to me, to be honest with you guys. But even a silver plate cigarette box like that in my shop, I'll price it up at 15 quid, take whatever offer comes in. It's another shop filler. I haven't got any silver plate boxes. It's another shop filler. You should see the amount of people now that have come in the shop and asked to buy me, guys. Have they? Yeah. Hey, I now have new stock. <laughs> they do ask, can they have me? <laughs> I'll see you soon, guys. I go back out to that freezing cold. I'm just not going me. out there. And I'm, you wonder why I'm, I got a cold. Look at it. It's, it's cold. Out I'm staying for you. Just a minute. Just a minute. It's a bit too cold. It's no such thing as too cold, guys. It is. I don't like being cold, guys. Can't help it. I'm going to chuck a jumper on. And when that tea van opens, I'm having a nice hot chocolate. And hopefully my uh, nose will unblock at some point. Can I have a periton, please? Yes, you can. Happy days. See you soon, guys. Let's see what else I can find. Bye. Get out there at all. It's absolutely freezing. Oh. I don't care for Biden. Oh my God. My fingers are purple. Oh. I've only been out there for about 10 minutes. Do I actually think it's got colder, not warmer, as the morning gone? It's minus one still. It's still minus one according to the car. But the wind is making it got to be minus 48. <sighs> just had a hot chocolate to try and warm up and I swear to God I had to spend two pound on a pair of stretchy gloves that I could get <laughs> for a pound in one of these pound shops yeah. but it was that cold I couldn't literally leave my hands uncovered any longer um, buying wise wow hell of a day don't even walking around see nobody else will come out let me give you a <laughs> joke you hold that for me for a few minutes yeah. and show them. I don't mind at all, warm my hands up. Let me give you a little look at the boot wash here so far, guys. Um, as you can see, it is filling up. There's actually three or four rows now of cars. Um, not many people walking around buying, as you can see. Now, I just lucked in on one car. And I'm going to show you everything I've bought in a bit. And all I can say is, wow, they made my day. Thank you. Um, I had the most beautiful 1920s, 1930s Art Deco model glass ceiling shade and a beautiful shape to it, uh, beautiful colours and it cost me a fiver. I've had some vintage toys off him, I've had a microscope off him, now I paid £45 for the microscope. But God, it's a good example guys. I didn't see that. No, there's a lot you haven't seen. Uh, I haven't been out really, guys. you got no chance. At all. Dot com. Um, I've only been out there once. It was horrible. I really have bought well today. My nose is running, sorry. It's that cold. But no, I've bought super well. I've just had a leather Gladstone bag. I think they called it a Gladstone bag. For £2. Proper leather. £2. Give it a polish, you know, they're 35, 40 quid. <coughs> Buy-in is superb. I just had a pot full of coins. He said to me, ah, oh, two quid. It was only a couple of silver ones, and he said two quid. So I tipped the pot, and he said, oh no, you can have the pot as well. I'll get two quid for the pot. Back on the boot sale when I work the boot again. Um, marbles, Concord memorabilia. A double saw. Oh, I've had some nice stuff today, guys. It's going to be an interesting video. It's not my normal haul. So it'll be good for you to actually see a variety this week. And the cars are still coming in. 
this next to no buyers yet. It is just so cold, people haven't come out. Oh, I can't cope, guys. This is the right time now, right, for you to have my seat. I'm quite happy to stay in bed. <laughs> Do you know, since I've been on my diet, I swear to God, I am constantly freezing. It must be to do with having a load of cold foods. Oh, it's the protein, lack of protein in your body making you cold. Oh, yeah. I Somebody do. told me that already. I, I genuinely, I've never been this cold, he'll tell you that. I'm always the one walking around going, oh, it's not too bad, you know. I'm murdered. Oh, with clubs on. I know, I'm actually still warmer than you, but... No. <laughs> but I've been out there with He's been out I, I can't. Since we got here at 10 past 6, I've been out with that cold, guys. And honestly, I'm glad I put my jumper on earlier because it's still eating through to me. I got thermal trousers on, I got my tracksuits on, I got thermal t shirt on, I got a t shirt on, I got a hoodie on, I got a jumper on, woolly jumper, and a big, you know, tweed type coat. Um, and I'm freezing. Well, I've got two pairs of trousers on, a vest on, a top on, a jumper on, a coat on. And of course, and uh, I don't wear that. Genuinely, I feel so sorry for these people out here. I really do. That's my mother's sleepy so early. Yeah, that's gorgeous, isn't it? Oh, wow, that's my mother, though. Look at that, guys. Around. You can actually come here and kit a house out with some really good gear. Look at that. That's absolutely finest leather recliners. It's brand my new. They're brand new, no, they're a grand a set in the shop, maybe a grand and a half a set in the shop. I bet they won't be any more than three, four hundred quid, don't you? Probably freshly uh, out of the back of their uh, showroom, but hey ho, innit? Don't matter, it's probably what people have used. It could be uh, the um, showroom examples or something, innit? Yeah. <sighs> oh, God, it's nice to have something warm going in my belly. Jamie was some burger and chips and stuff. Oh God, yeah. Of they... course we wouldn't. We both we both died. Um... Hey guys, I've lost two stone, which is twenty eight pound. Which is really I've lost twenty nine pound. Two stone, one pound. So I'm over the moon with that in seven weeks of being extremely strict and doing the gym for two to two, two, two to two and a half hours, five days a week. Well, actually less than that because. I do aqua aerobics, which is movement in the pool, and then zumba, which is uh, dancing. So then, what classes in an hour a week? So, but yeah, I'm really doing well. It's been hard, mind, especially in this really cold weather. All I want to do is eat warm food. You know, you want the home comforts to know when it's freezing. Just as a little reminder, guys, you've got less than a week till I draw the competition video. Uh, three of you will win. So if you haven't entered the competition video yet, I suggest you um, you go and watch it if you're interested. Um, obviously, if you're not interested, then don't worry. But there's three going to be three winners. You get a small prize and a T-shirt this time round uh, to celebrate the uh, when I reach the thousand subscribers. Since putting that video up, I'm now on 1125, something like that. So they are really going up really strong now, so I am grateful. Thank you for the help and the support. Can't wait to show you some of the stock I got, but for now, I'm going to finish this hot chocolate, and then I'm going to get back out there and buy and buy and buy, because i got a full shop to keep going. Hey, guys. I've booked a weekend holiday, too, coming up in a couple of weeks, and I've actually booked my dog to take my dog with me. That is going to be fun. I think you should take him. You should, you should never leave your family behind. Oh, he's a Labrador, he is, and I hate leaving it. I hate it. But he's such a big boy. I thought, oh, we'll try him this time round. So, <laughs> he should be running around the beach, hopefully playing in the sea. You know, I'm actually looking forward to going. Edward's devastated because I'm going without him. That'll be a weekend. When if you can take my seat in the car? You, you can. That'll be a weekend, I wonder if we can take my seat in the car. Now you know that's not fair because we already know there's two or three from overseas that would be jumping up and down now saying, I want to be there, and they can't. Yes, they can, they could book a flight. <laughs> <laughs> Save up your travel miles. Yeah, but I am, I'm not going to be here that weekend. But you can also then, if you want to pinch my seat in the car, come down to my holiday destination and come and visit me for an hour or two. Because if we're not a million miles away anyway, I'm only going to Treco Bay. We may 
it's not going till April guys so we may um, pay, pop down and do an out and about video, day out video visiting uh, Sandra and the family. You know the store, we go to Treco Bay in a caravan, I mean we've been, you've had me a few times down there now, stood there mortified in my pyjamas. So yeah, that's why we, we're actually taking the dog this time, um, we got to try him. So yeah, you can come down, you can come and visit me, even if it's on film. Anyway, I think we're going to leave him there. Yeah. I'm going to go buy it and I'll come back and I'll see you in our Oh, look at that carpet he got over there, man, for God, see my living room's blue, is no good. There's a stall over there, I just bought the most beautiful uh, Middle Eastern uh, brass kettle or teapot with loads of um, like Ottoman marks on there, impressed marks, so you have to look that up. And I'm looking at the teapot and I look down like that and they got a Persian rug on the floor. Ten foot by five foot Persian bloody rug on the floor. Do you think they'd sell it to me? They use it as their tablecloth. Honest to God. Shocking, if I can, I'll stick, sneak a picture of that in a minute for you, just so you can see what I mean. They're using the beautiful rug on the floor for this rubbish. I got an itchy arm. All these layers are now, and I got an itch. It's so slow out of Let me open the doors then, right? You can take them off and scratch. Were well, you trying to see my arms? Are that long? <gasps> no, trying I was to trying to, smell? no, I was trying to say you get cold. Do you know what he done? Right, I swear to God, right, come here. I was. I went out for about 15 minutes. I come back, I was doubled I over. Anyway, I was doubled over. He comes with, with the cold drive. He opens the driver's door, leaves our wide open, and then starts fiddling about, I was going to swear that, in the back, with the back door open as well, leaving all the wind to blow through. And I was like this, oh, just shut the door. What have we got it open for when you're not using it? I weren't impressed. Anyway. Gonna leave it there. I'll see you soon, guys. Bye for now. Bye. Well, it didn't really fill up any more than halfway, guys. Um, just give you a little look now, so you can see. And it's still quiet. What's the time, Sand? I don't know. Um, yeah, no, I can't look at the time there. It's about quarter of ten. I'll have a look now. <laughs> I can't reach my bar. Then frozen to the spot. Oh, I don't even want to bed. You know, for this time of day on a Sunday, it's got to be around 10 o'clock. Let's have a look. What's the time? Quarter to 10. Quarter to 10, guys. So we've done about three and a half hours here, and I have got an absolute full car. And in the boot. Some of the. Um, yeah, I don't want to be in there. It's fine, lad. <sighs> Some of the stock I've bought today has been really fabulous and some of it has been really different to what I normally buy. Um, I've had the most wonderful solid oak, I think it was oak or mahogany, might have been mahogany actually, Art Nouveau carved mirror and side supports and the mirror's all distressed, um, looks really beautiful. That I paid £8 for, and to be honest with you, I think that's going to be a really good earner. 50p, guys. 50p. And apparently you can plug your phone into it. Not that I cared for 50p. It was to keep my years warm. Tell us you got another one. But that one was also frozen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, it's killing me. They're selling carpets, well, rugs over there. And I want one. I do want one. And... They, they're being nasty, they want £20 for it and I want to pay a fiver. <laughs> I'm joking. It's not joking. I, I have pouted, I want a carpet. I have literally anyway filled the car up guys. Uh, I'm going to film it all for you tonight. And uh, to be honest with you, it's going to be unbelievable amount when you get to see it. Um, I've gone through a fair bit of money mind, I'd say good £150 today down the boot sale. Mm. Um, so it have not come in for nothing, but some of it's really good and some of it's going to fly out the door. So I can't really mourn. And it's warm in the car. Well, warm I got two pairs of trousers on and it feels like i got a pair of tights on. It's so cold. Oh, God. Well, I'm not being funny. I can't remember the last time I was wrapped up this warm, even in the winter time when we were out. No, I know. Yeah, I've been, I've been awful first thing this morning. 
I wouldn't get out of the car. I said, no, I'm not. Not until... I've done three and a half hours walking on the boat. Sandra's done 20 minutes. I have. <laughs> I've done the last hour and a half. No, she didn't. I have. No, she didn't. I have. Uh, I've done the last two hours, to be totally honest. He done our work on his own. They know I done more than that. The amount of times I come back and forth. Anyway. Oh. Oh, look, see, now he's wrapping my rug up now. Look, right, somebody else bought my rug. Oh, see. No, you haven't got to feel so bad about leaving it here. Somebody I wanted it, it I wanted another one. I like the silver one, too. Uh, you, we can drive past him and shout out to ten if you want to as we're driving past. <laughs> John, stay on camera, guys, while he says me. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, I'm on that rug. We're going to ask him. No, I don't like to. I I feel rude. You are rude. <laughs> no, I am. What do you think I'm sending you for? They want £30 a rug, they do, guys. And to be totally honest with you, my Labrador is a nightmare. I have a black Labrador. We love him to bits. We do. Dealy. I love right. him. Listen. But. What's your minimum? I don't want. Or what's your maximum you'll pay for it? Five on. Oh, I ain't going over there. I ain't going over there. Go, go over and ask and see if you can come back with the rug. I would have gone over and tried for 10, but he would have probably gone 15, considering he started at 30. Yeah, that would be fine half price. Right then. Which one do you think would match your living room, the brown one or the black one? Um, the silver one we looked at first of all was lovely. First silver one? Yeah. Look at this, this is what we do, see. He talks about the stock and then I start mourning that I've seen something I want for the living room. Sell the tape in my camera down a minute, guys. So that I can drive and this going on a little bit. Have you got money on you now? No. I don't know how much money I got left. Hang on. Uh, I'm not bothered. Hang on. I don't care. I, I might have to go to the cash point anyways. I have got money on you. I got my bank card anyway, so it's fine. Have you got money on him? I don't know much I got. I've got about 20, 30 quid left on me, I think. Well, well there we go. Oh, right. Just check it now, because I've spent an absolute arm and leg on it. Well, you come back with your arm and your legs, so you probably have to spend as much as you've got. Well, I've definitely got five for there. And I've got lots of change. No, in it, in it all full, guys. I bought that well. It's not I, even I got my van card, so I can always go to the My dog keeps ruining my carpets. Just by peeing on him. He rolls around and just... He's a nightmare, he is. <laughs> you got money in every pocket, yeah. <laughs> I'm dropping mine, man. Right. Ooh. How much do you want? 10 or 15? I want that one, thank you. Hi! Thank you. Oh, no, I'm dropping money now. I just dropped 20 Yeah, feet. it's 50 feet. Thank you for that one. Right then, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You want to take the old ones? 11. Somebody's dumped old ones on me. Oh, never. 12. 13, 14, right, I got 15 quid by you, you're not paying any more than after anyway, you? so I'll go see if I can get it for a tenner, huh? while we're on camera. Turn the camera around and see if we can get it for ten pounds. No, I'm going to just leave the camera like that. Are we going? Two, four, we're six, driving to Eight, nine, ten, fifteen. Yeah, we're driving to buggers. We're driving past. <laughs> I'm going to scream it out of my window now and I'm going to be mortified. Here we go. Um, we'll put it on, sorry, sorry. You may have to get up to the car. Conroy. No. You look like a div. See, I go all shine. Can you go a tenner on that silver rug? The one on the end? No, 20 quid is the least on it. No, I haven't got 20, 15? No, 20 is the very least. No, I can't do it. Alright, mate. No. Thank you. Bye. We tried. We tried, guys. Put my money away. 
You could have done 20 if you wanted. Do you know? What, I made what, it. What, it don't match my living room. My living room's blue, guys. You've seen it. And I thought, okay, I can do a bit of silver. Awesome. What? That print. I thought I can do a bit of silver. That's okay. But no, 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 no. It's too much silver. Can you see that print number there? It's no, gorgeous. It's on me. Is it on you? I can't see. Hi. I'm not a print. On the stall. Anyway. I had one hell of a haul of the day. Excuse the boxes behind me. I'm having a major sort through on um, a stock. I'm... Um, the only way to explain it to you is making sure I've been going through all my boxes, making sure everything I got up for sale online, I've actually got in my my containers, making sure I haven't taken something to the shop, sold it, um, and still got it up for sale. So, and at the same time, things I used to have on eBay that when I shut my eBay down, making sure that I haven't got something sat in a box, wrapped up, coded. That isn't up for sale anywhere at all, which I could take down the shop and sell. So it's um, been really, really hectic week. So I got boxes everywhere in the house at the moment. Um, I'm up in my eyeballs. <laughs> and what can I say? Um, you've seen the first half of the video, obviously. And to be honest, with you, this is not all my haul. I got one, two. Over 30 pieces today, guys. Over 30. Now, I've been contemplating, do I split it into two films and show you half um, in this film and half in the next? And I've decided, you know what? For once, let's just have a super haul. Let you see one day's buy-in, uh, just how busy I am. And then you can imagine, I gotta pack it, wash it, clean it, um, price it, research it. I do all the work on there. Um, <laughs> you can soon see how hard it is for one day's work, but I got some beautiful things. Now, as you know, I went through about 140, 150 pounds somewhere around there today. It haven't all come in for nothing, um, but I do think I've got a good, good profit on everything I bought. Some things more than others, guys. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I normally pick a piece up and show you that and then move on now what i'm going to do today is i'm going to show you i'm going to clear a little section of the table i'm going to put one item down there show you it talk about it pack it away move the next one across be purely because i just got so much here and i want to pack them separately certain things are going to the shop tomorrow and other things are being packed away to be cleaned up and go down there another day um so that's what I'm going to do. I'll um, clear a little area now. I'm going to set up the camera just onto a little area there on the table, and you'll get to see some of the pieces on close up as to what I've bought. So I hope you enjoy. It's going to be a long video, guys. As I said, it's 30 pieces to go through. And when I go through this lot, I've got another two pieces that are massive. Got to go on the table, show you some big pieces I bought. So I'll stick around. And if you think my day consisted of going to a boot sale, coming home, going to sleep, and then laying this out to make a film, you're wrong. Yes, I'm in my pyjamas, my onesie off my daughter. Um, but what did I do when I come home? Spend time doing my child's school project with him ready to go to school tomorrow. And I'll splice in photographs of that at the end. What we uh, have to do, we have to do something relating to whales and mining and things. So we actually created a 3D model of an open cast mine as best as we could. So I'll include the images of that mine at the end so you can actually see it ain't just go to the boot sale, come home, oh he's tired, have a few hours and then get up and do this. The day doesn't stop guys. As you know I've been up since 4 o'clock this morning, it's now coming up 11 o'clock in the night. I'm back up again at 6 in the morning and I haven't finished yet, i got to make this film. Wash all the stock I want to go to the shop tomorrow, pack it all up. Get it ready, priced up. I've got to do packed lunches for the children. I've just had a bath now, literally now, half past ten at night. Um, <laughs> it's not an easy life, I assure you. It's busy, busy, busy. So let's get to it and start showing you. Now, I don't know where all these pieces are. Some of the glass pieces um, are quite spectacular quality, 
but as to who made them all at the moment, I'm not 100%. Um, I've got two vases in particular that are really nice and I don't know who's made them yet. I will do my research this week and I'll find out, but um, you'll get to see them. But I'll let you know which ones, uh, I don't know what they are. But as you can see, it's a really good haul. I'm going to give you a pan over just the table before I start and then we're going to get to it. Hope you enjoy. Stick with it. It really is worth seeing it through to the end because it's some beautiful pieces. And then to finish off, I got two spectacular lots. So, see you in a minute. Just quickly before I start, guys, I thought I'll come down and I'll show you the uh, 3D model of an open cast mine we've done. Um, so, basically, got a cardboard box. Um, we cut it out. I made the different ledges with him. Um, we put little ramps down for each ledge. We put boulders in. We've painted it all or sprayed it all black. Put little bits of colours in for the iron ore and other things. Got a nice lump of coal down there. Uh, I didn't have a dumper truck, so I used an old army truck. Um, filled it with coal in the back. And there's his little 3D version of an open cast mine. And there you see it. And this is all representing the grass around the outside. Because an open cast mine, as you're aware, there's two types of mining. You have one where they dig a tunnel and go down underground, and you have the other where they literally just move the earth and dig a massive hole. So that's his 3D project. That took us a couple of hours this afternoon. Uh, so hopefully you'll be happy with that going into school tomorrow. Okay, panning over. I'm not going to explain to you what things are now, but uh, you will see in just a minute what everything is. Some of it is simple working stock and some of it is quite good quality. But it is a really good mix of things. And to be totally honest with you, going to make a really nice addition down the shop. Okay, so let's get to it, is it? Okay, so we're going to start here, guys, with what I consider to be a butte. It's uh, early 20th century. And we have a beautiful microscope. Now this one comes boxed with loads of lenses, um, slides, loads of specimen slides and specimens and things. It's quite a few specimens. Now if I looked what they all are, no I haven't. Um, SEL, specimen slides for students, microscope and there's three boxes of them. There's another box here full of homemade slides, whatever they wanted to look at. Um, you got the spare lens here. Um, taking into account, obviously, it comes in a lovely mahogany box. Then we have the microscope. Beautiful piece. All brass. Got a maker's mark to it. Where are we? There we go. Let me see if I turn him around this way. Sorry, guys. Um, there. Oh, sorry. There. Hopefully that's focusing in. Maker's mark of J. Parks and Son. Patentees of Birmingham. Bear with me a second. Move this back. Sorry guys, it's hard to do it this way. I haven't done it like this for a long time. So anyway, as you can see, really nice microscope and it works. I have tried it. It's all working. Now this actually owes me £45. It didn't come in for nothing. Um, it came to the table and there was a queue of people waiting to buy this. Um, and it got plonked down in front of me. And needless to say, I wanted it too. So, I'd done a deal. He wanted 50, I got it for 45. But I did have quite a lot of this gentleman. 
and to be honest with you, I'm going to price that up at 85 in the shop, maybe 95, 85, 95 pound, and I don't think I'm going to struggle to sell that. It's going to go pretty quick. So that's my first. Um, really pleased with that, guys. Um, he chucked in for a couple of pound. I don't think it's related to this telescope, but we have another telescope lens. <laughs> telescope. What am I on about? Microscope, guys. Sorry. Um, so we had another lens, a nice early lens thrown in for two pound. Um, so I may put it with the microscope. I don't know. Other than that, I'll chuck a you know five or ten quid on that separate, and the same person may buy that. <laughs> Um, I know, it looks like Clara's Cliff, but it's not signed or nothing. Now what we have here is a piece of Wilkinson pottery. Now Clara's Cliff worked for Newport Pottery and Wilkinson Pottery. The pattern is Memory Lane. It's very much in the manner of Clara's Cliff. Now I paid a fiver for this. It's a lovely pot. It's got a star, very old star crack inside, which I can bleach out. Um, and you won't see it if I want to. I'll give it a clean, but I'll probably sell it as is, just authentic. Still looks beautiful. Pay the fiver, it's going to go for 20, 25 pound. No problem at all. Give it a wash, that'll be in the shop tomorrow. Another beautiful piece of Kaiser porcelain. German porcelain, guys, there's the mark. Lovely bird of paradise, I think, or peacock. I think it's a bird of paradise. Beautiful porcelain vase. Now I've been buying quite a bit of this Kaiser stuff of late, as you've seen. Fiver. Now there's no age to it. It's still a modernish piece. Um, I'm not sure if it's only been in production over the last 10 years. However, it would have been a 40, 50 pound vase. No. Um, and it's still going to be a 20, 25 pound vase with myself. So already you see in this some nice bits of quality. Um, I've I have a lady coming in the shop, and she buys all my figurines, thirty five, forty pound each, no questions. They all go. Now I don't care if they were sixty pound or if they were thirty pound. They all go around the same value, around thirty five, forty pound. They come in to me at the right money, and they go straight out. Here we have an early Dalton one, early Mark, and she's the bride. No doubt this will be hand embellished, hand painted or whatever you want to call it, hand sprayed. Um, but it is what it is, a perfect Dalton figurine of the bride and she cost me £20. But as I've said, she'll be gone in the next day or two for £35 and no questions asked, done and dusted. <laughs> There he is, take me home, he's lost. He normally comes with a tag, if lost, please return to Paddington Station or somewhere along them lines. And we have a Paddington Bay. We have the PB on his shoe for Paddington Bay. It's in good condition. He cost me a fiver, guys. Um, so, what's he worth? Not a lot more, he's worth about 12 quid, 12, 15 pounds. Um, but I have a teddy bear collector in the shop and I'm trying to buy to order guys, I really am. And to be honest with you, I don't mind turning a fiver into 10 or 15 pound when it goes straight away. And I'm hoping he'll go straight away. <clears throat> this brings back some memories. Tom and Jerry. Loved Tom and Jerry in the 80s when I was growing up. Uh, born in 77, so this was right in my era in the 80s. Now, we have here a spinning top, advertising obviously Tom and Jerry, and it's dated 1989, unless I'm mistaken. Yep, 1989, Turner, Enterprise and Co., all rights reserved, blah blah blah. And it's, it's new old stock, if you like, guys, never been out the packet. I paid £2 for that this morning, um, what do I think it's worth, probably about £15, something like that, but that's really good turnover, 2 into 15 and it'll sell. Now that, 
Now I haven't even been through them yet guys. Now with marbles what are you looking for? Well to be honest with you, you're looking for the earlier hand blown marbles. Uh, then you're looking for anything unusual design if it's got something in the marble you know I don't know exactly what they were like flowers or things like that or unusual spirals but there's a couple of kilos of marbles probably five kilos of marbles by there there's a lot of them I'm gonna go through them to make sure there's not any early or rare ones in there I do, do know how to take uh, spot some of the earlier ones um, I'm no expert on marbles, I assure you, but um, I know a good marble if I see it. So, or at least I like to think I do. Um, I paid £4 for the marbles today. And they're going to go for £20-25 in the shop. And it, again, if there's something good in it, I'm going to take it out. But that, you know, 20 quid in the shop, no problem at all. That's a nice little job lot, something different for the shop. Okay, one of my favourite buys of the day, guys. An absolute stormer of an Art Deco mottled glass ceiling shade. Look at the shape on that. Absolutely beautiful. You normally see these where they're one level and they're round and they're boring. This is beautiful. Really nice. It comes with the chains and the ceiling mount. Look at the colouring on that. Absolutely spectacular. I love this deep colouring. I paid a fiver for it, guys. It's got to be worth £45, £55. And under light, I can tell you now, this is going to look spectacular. Look at that. That is lush. And it's perfect. There's not a chip, not a flea bite, nothing. And it's got its original chains, original ceiling mount. In all honesty, it's going to be 55. That may even end up going a bit more than 55, maybe 65 on the website rather than in the shop. I don't know whether they'd appreciate that around Mountain Ash. Um, but I really do. I absolutely love this one. I'd like to say I'll use it in my house, but I've got nowhere to put it. Um, I like my, my rooms very bright and well lit, so this would diffuse a lot of the light. This piece, guys, is a bit of fret work. Um, pine, uh, not pine, sorry. Um, it's compressed wood. You can see the different layers of timbers here, it's like a plywood, then, if you like. Um, but it's all been then carved out. And if you look this way, you have some form of mythical bird or griffin on both sides. So it is basically a wall shelf that will stand on a wall or mount attached to the wall like so. Beautifully cut out, nicely done. And to be honest though, it cost me £2 this morning. And I think I'll comfortably get 20 quid for that. 15 to 20 pound quite comfortable with the animals uh, all the fret work 20 quid for a shelf doesn't seem expensive to me okay so here we go next little lot is nothing spectacular it's a little art deco 1930s brass Maybe a hat pin holder or something like that. don't know what these pins are or maybe just a pin holder. Let me see. Uh, they might just be normal pins. Or, I don't know. Either way, they may be hat pins. But either way, it's a 1920s brass Art Deco pin holder. And it has a little terrier on the front. And it was a 50p. Um, it's not going to be fortunes. But as a little curio, it may be 8 or 10 quid in the shop. And it just gives it that little something different. And I will check that one to make sure it's not gold. That one there, sorry guys. It's hard to look at the item on the camera, I am sorry, but we'll get there. 
This isn't my new way of filming all the time, it's just for this one because I got so much stock. Um, next we have an absolute stormer of a bracelet. Beautiful solid silver set with an amethyst there and cubic zirconia either side. Fully hallmark, never been out the box. Now I paid £8 for it but it's a £20 bracelet, £25 bracelet. No problem at all, it really is brand new. Mint beautiful, so happy enough with that. We move across, guys, to another microscope. Now, this one again, cast iron, uh, but this one is more um, a toy than if you like, or a late student one. But I'd say more a toy, maybe from the 70s. Comes in this uh, case. Does 100, 200, and 300 times zoom. Now, microscope instructions, extra bits and bobs, the tweezers and things. Now, that cost me £4 this morning, and I'm going to chuck £20, £25 on that, see what I get, uh, see what offers come through the door. But it's quite a nice little item, and to be honest, though, complements the other. Um, microscope makes them really see the quality of the other one. This one's all right, you know. If you just want a cheap microscope to play with at home or for the kids, it's still better than your average example in the shop now. So, you know, for 20 25 quid, they'll be quite happy with that. Next piece, guys, bit of fans. Uh, now, normally with fans, you you know you think of Quimper or Campe and things like that. Now this is a bit of Fat Main. You see a signed here. It's not always signed on the back. The back of this plate is bay. It's stinking dirty. That's dirt, not anything else. Um, so Fat Main signed to the front. So always check um, because I know um, a couple of really good designers that have signed to the front and pulled good money. But a faience plate was 50 pence. It's going to be 12 or 15 pound, no problem at all. Uh, it's got obviously going to be quite an important uh, building. Won't take a lot, says you what it is. So it won't take a lot to find out the history on the building. And that will be moved on pretty quick. Bear with me a second, guys. Now, this is gorgeous. It's, I always call them end of day vases, but I've recently been corrected saying they're not end of day. Now, this is far better quality than your average. A lot of the time you'll see the glass with a little bit of mottling. This is really thick, heavy mottled glass. Real nice quality. So, I've always called them end of day glasses, but obviously I've just been corrected on the group saying they're not end of day. They were made all day long and they were made for sale as they are. I was always under the impression they were just made of leftover pieces at the end of the day. Um, but that is a particularly nice example, probably 30s, uh, 30s to 50s, and it cost me a pound. Love it. Next, guys, we have a Victorian decanter. Beautiful facet gl cut global stopper, hobnail cut into the body, and the bottom half is clean. So that tells me it may have been maybe in a tantalus or something like that, or stand where the bottom half of the bottle would have been covered by the wood. Um, but it is a clean example. One or two tiny flea bites on the rim, but I'm not even going to worry about them. Now, the decanter and the Palomino horse stand me in at £17. I know it's a strange mix, but they come off the same uh, antique dealer I know and they stand me in at £17 for the pay. This decanter is going to go for 20 maybe 25 so my money back and a profit there. Now the Palomino horse is normally a £40 to £50 pound horse. Love the colour. Fully uh, stamped up basic in the centre there. Sometimes you'll see the name of the animal, depending on what animal it is and that. Um, however, this horse has a problem. 
he's had a little operation there on his ear if you can see it either that or it's a very fine hairline um, so I will have to tell them about that when I settle it it is his original ear on there it isn't um, remodeled or anything but the price now drops on that one to a 25 to 30 pound however a 25 pound each for my 17 pound I'm getting a 50 pound return and they're both ready to go I haven't got to touch them they're just ready to go straight in the shop up for sale job done wait for a buyer as you know I love cannons we have a nice little brass cannon here guys cost me all a two quid it's probably got that in scrap value um, oh hang on what we got underneath a Bassett Loke model hmm, okay so anyway that's gonna be 15 pound cannon cost me two quid it's gonna go out in the shop for 15 pound people do like cannons you know it's good shop stock you know um, shelf fillers things like that look good and um, people like them done this one so bear with me a second we come on to a modern piece guys it's not a lot of age to it in the last sort of 30 years I would imagine 30 40 years now we have a vintage I was going to say black lacquer, but I don't think it's lacquer. Um, but anyway, we have a wooden jewellery box, oriental, but more than likely Chinese. Well, looking at it, I'm pretty certain it's Chinese. It's actually signed. Right there, signed. Now, I've never seen one signed before. So I'm going to have to check all this inlay. It's all brass mounted. These drawers, the handles flip up, the drawers come out. Put him down by a second and you can see him then. So the, they flip out, drawer comes out, they're all lined drawers with uh, little Chinese silks. That would have been the lock, but it's lost the other half. These locks are also used on tantluses, guys, and you can sell them locks on their own. Anyway, the jewellery box stands me in at a fiver. It's a very decorative jewellery box. Um, again, what's it worth? Not fortunes, 20, 25 pound. Hang on, we have something on the back. Bear with me. We have a made in China mark. It wouldn't be hard to date that mark. It's probably a 70s mark. Um, it's actually in tin and enamel. So better than just a little ink stamp. So a really pretty little box, guys. 20 25 quid, no problem, and out the door. For the fiver, it's five times my money. Won't take it long and it'll be gone. Um, next piece is a bit of carnival glass. Now, I know carnival glass isn't really popular at the moment and the colour isn't popular, but it is what I consider to be a genuine piece of carnival glass. Now, I have done a video on tips of carnival glass uh, have a look at it in my videos guys um, this is quite a nice example to be totally honest with you I haven't looked up the pattern yet but as you know I just use Dottie's carnival website um, this this morning cost me three pounds um, I bought him with a couple of other pieces but it stands me in for about three pound on his own it has got a nice luster, believe it or not. You, the lusters there just stink and dirty, it needs a wash. Uh, once it's out of wash with fairy liquid, it's going to glow. So, I even though carnival glass isn't really in vogue, I'm still buying it, guys. I'm not leaving it there. Uh, we got a nice heavy brass horseshoe with um, horse and jockey jumping a fence. Just nice, I don't know if it's an ashtray or just a little. Trinket dish or what? It's about four or five inches squared. Um, nice patina. It's probably from the 30s. Looking at that, 30s or 40s. It was a pound, either a 50p or a pound, and it's going to go out for maybe a tenner. It's just a little bit of you know something if you like horse racing, you know, come home, chuck your keys on it, anything. So it's just a nice little dish.
This one here, guys, is absolutely stunning. Um, now, this is one of the pieces I said earlier. I didn't know um, who made it. I'm not sure. I think it might be Powell, believe it or not. It's vertically ribbed, thick ribbon all the way around. It has this banding of colour going through it and a controlled bubbles. It's very thick, heavy glass with a polished pontle. Now I'm thinking white fryers, power glass along them lines. Really is quality, guys. It's beautiful. Um, now it cost me a whole two pound. I know, two pound. But it is gorgeous. Now, if I can attribute it to white fryers, it's still only going to be 30, 35 pound in my shop anyway. Um, I don't go for internet prices at 50s and 60s. I just price it up as a decorative art piece and uh, name it. Um, if it's white fryers, it's £35. If it's uh, an unknown factory in the end, it's still going to be £25 or £30. So I'm not losing a lot either way. But it is a beautiful bar and quality, guys. Here's the... Another vase, let me just lift the camera up for you to see that. There's another vase, come off the same gentleman. Now, he was £2 a vase across the board. However, he did turn around to me and say, I'm sorry, but I am not selling you the big one for £2. So he sold me the large one for £2.50. Now, it's by a company called Zwizzle, which is German. Um, and as you can see, the colours are absolutely amazing. Bear with me just a second. Let's give you a little close up. Look at them colours, guys. Absolutely stunning bars. Now, it's got its original labels, which always helps. There we go. It's handmade in Germany. Now, it does have a very small chip on the rim. Now, that is small. Um, if it didn't have that, I'd probably be, be up about 45, 50 pounds for a vase of that size, that quality. Now it's probably going to be about £30 because of that chip. However, spectacular bar is going to look amazing and I don't think I'm going to struggle to sell it. Next piece, guys, is the one, second one. I didn't know who made it. There we go. That is beautiful again. It's, I think this is what's called free form, where they just do the bars and then just pull up this organic rim it's again large thick base polished pontal again it's a quality polished pontal um, it's quite drawn in as you can see the ribbon and that beautiful blue color blue um, but again it's not one I know it's not something that's jumping out at me that I know so I'll do a bit of research but if it ends up just being an unknown piece of 20th century art glass then it's 30 quid if I can attribute it to somebody it may go up to 40 or 50 um, but again for £2.50 I'm not going to complain I'll buy art glass even modern art glass for £2.50 all day long here guys is a perfect example of me yet again making a stupid mistake now, a woman came down the car boot sale this morning and she had these two on her table. A 2004 Concord calendar in mint condition, in the original packaging, boxed, with some stunning images of Concord in flight. And she also had, in mint condition in the boxes again, a 2005, exactly the same, you know, full of Concord photographs. Now they have the Concorde seal as well, so they are all original. Concorde was 1976 to 2003 on that seal. Uh, obviously it didn't shut down then. Or, um, I'm not 100% when Concorde shut down, it was somewhere around the last 10 years, I think. Um, anyway, getting back to the point, they were a pound each. And she had about a hundred, of the, uh, 50 of each year and I bought one of each don't ask me why now I see these going out to the shop at 12 quid each and genuinely what I should have done is said to her how much for them all and bought the lot um, at a pound each if she dropped down or knocked the fiver off or a tenner off to buy the hundred 
I was stupid. Uh, by the time I went back from every single one of them had sold, people were buying them like they were going out of fashion at a pound each. And that's one of my regrets for this year so far. Um, I lost probably a thousand pound by there for a 90 pound outlay. So I'm more than gutted. You can see the condition of them, they are mint. <laughs> Excuse me. So, beautiful items. Um, and a little story about how stupid I am. Okay, guys, here we have two really interesting lamps. They're modern in design, modernish lamps, maybe 70s, looking at them. Um, now I'm doing quite well with lighting at the moment and retro seems to be really in. Here we have a little crystal lamp. Now I've seen these reproduced in plastic but this is all cut crystal, it's glass that's been hand cut. Um, beautifully finished. As I said this is a crystal example not um, plastic like some of the repos. <laughs> And this one here reminds me of the Wedgwood candlesticks with the discs. So you saw sort of 60s, 70s again with the brass base. Now, realistically, they need rewiring, um, which I may have done. I don't spend a fortune to have them rewired, maybe a fiver a lamp. They cost me a pound each. So if I have them rewired, you can see the edge just on the switches on the uh, sockets there. Um, yeah, they're not brilliantly wired at the moment, but I think they should be thirty, thirty-five pound a lamp. Um, so I do like lighting, and to be honest, with you, they do have something about them. This one is quality with the crystal cut in, and it's no chips. Really, is quite nice, and I love the design of these discs. I'm assuming these discs are wood. I haven't put them under an eyeglass yet to check if they bake a light or something like that, but they look wood. So two lamps, two quid. Happy enough. Okay, so I'm not 100. percent I think it's a glad what they call a Gladstone bag. Um, it's like a doctor's uh, bag, if you like. It's in leather. As you can see, it's in really good condition. The lining inside is immaculate. Look at that. Absolutely mint inside. I don't know if you can see it tidy. It's got a number eight wrote on it there, uh, but there. Um, I haven't looked for maker's marks or nothing at all. Um, I haven't even checked inside to see if there's anything in there. Do you know, I'm not 100% of the use of the bag, but you know, for a leather bag, it was two quid in that condition. I'll put a bit of brown shoe polish on that, get it glowing, and chuck 30 quid on that, and that'll fly out the door. So, I don't know why people like these old leather bags, but they go, and that's all that matters. I don't rate them myself, but hey ho. This piece here, guys, is interesting. Now, I took a photo of the people who were selling it. I did tell you in the film earlier that they sold me this and I wanted the rug that they were stood on. They put a big rug out um, and it was a beautiful Persian rug and they wouldn't sell it to me. Now this is earlier than it looks, I think. Now it's certainly Middle Eastern, but this has a load of impressed seal marks. Uh, right there. I don't know if you can see those. So research is needed, maybe some Ottoman marks there, I'm not sure. And again, there's another mark. Now, quite rare to get this type of brass way with the uh, seal marks there. So that needs research. Now I paid a fiver for it, but I did rate it. I like the shape, I like the color, and when I saw the marks, had to have it. I know, you're thinking, what the hell did I do buying a rusty box? Now, Sanoid, with the sign there, first aid. It's actually quite a nice box. What I intend to do is a bit of very light methylated spirits, clean it up. Um, 
and sell it on. Obviously, I haven't even took the contents out yet. I don't even know what's in here. A little bit of brass for my scrap box. Cheeky chums. Oh, it's a belly bean. Anyway, guys, um, we have an old vintage tin first aid box. If I give that a nice clean take, all the surface rust off it without actually cleaning the box, just light cotton wool and methylated spirits, the purple stuff, not the white stuff, and give it a bit of a wax, that'll actually pick this right in and that out. It'll stand out a bit. And I, I think I'll get 20 quid for that box. I paid a pound for it, guys. A whole pound. And I do actually quite like it. So, yeah. As you can see, I've cleared all the bric-a-brac off the table and I've got two more pieces to show you. This is the first. Now we have a two-man, I think they call it a buxel. Now it's probably from the 50s, 40s or 50s, something like that. Um, and to be honest with you, this is the first one I've seen complete and in lovely condition, to be honest with you. Uh, in quite a few years, I've seen broken ones and half a one, but to have a complete one in good condition um, is, to be honest with you, it's quite, quite rare. Now, I intend to give it a light clean, wax the handles, put a little bit of beeswax on the, um, the blade, and I intend on asking about £85 for this saw. I don't know what I'll get. I might end up getting 40 or 50 but it cost me two pounds this morning. Where do they end up? Old rustic pubs or farmhouses, things like that, as decoration. Nobody would use this now to chop a tree down. You could. It's still more than sharp. Um, but they'll end up, they will, um, as I said, as decoration somewhere. Now, how many of them are out there, I don't know. I haven't looked yet. But I haven't seen one for a long time, and I have seen them up for sale before, and I've, I've seen people asking 140, 150 pounds for these. Um, I don't rate them that type of money, but it should pull me 60, 70 quid back after a little bit of negotiation. So it's a really interesting piece. There we go, just for you to have a little look at it. I haven't seen any maker's marks and that on it yet. Now, I could be totally wrong and the market could be flooded with these and there could be no money at all now. But I know they used to pull good money to go in pubs and things. Um, but I'm pretty confident it'll be a decent uh, item. It's not my normal run-of-the-mill stock, guys, as you know, but it is still something that really, I really liked. It's decorative, it appealed to me, and uh, I bought it. Okay, so what we got now is an absolutely amazing Art Nouveau mirror. Now it's in solid mahogany. Now originally this would have been the top of a magnificent dressing table of some sorts. You can see here the side panels, uh, all carved. And they got the uh, brackets here for hanging the mirror on the side. Now you can see underneath here the little dowels. So they would have been mounted in to um, the top of a dressing table. However, if I chop those up for firewood, I'm then left with a magnificent mirror that can be hung on a wall. Now, there's nothing saying it has to be mounted on these brackets. So I'll do away with the sides. And then we have an Art Nouveau mirror. There's a beautiful Art Nouveau design to it. Look at that. This is all carved out of solid mahogany. Now the glass is beautifully distressed. Now I know you're looking, thinking, what the hell do you want a mirror like that for? Um, you watch any of the antiques programs having the original distressed glass triples, quadruples the value. If this had a new plate of glass, to be honest with you, I probably wouldn't have touched it. Um, but it is absolutely stunning. 
this looks worse than it actually is. Um, you won't believe me when I tell you how much I paid for it. All in all, I paid £8. She took one look at the glass and she said, well, it's got to go in the dump. And I thought to myself, this is 1910, 1915. Absolutely gorgeous. Don't care about this. I absolutely love the fact the original mirror is all distressed. It's got pit in and distressed all the way through it. Um, love this carved mahogany design. I, and I am going to actually mount it on the back with some uh, piano wire or something to hold the weight. And this is going to be a hall mirror. Now whether I sell it or whether I keep it I don't know yet. Um, but one thing's for sure, this original plate is staying in there. If you watch any of the antiques programs, people always say, oh change that, you can't see myself in it. That is the, where the value is, not in the frame. The value is in this distressed glass, this original look to the glass. Gives it the character and the age. Um, what can I say? 100 year old. This is a proper antique. Real quality carved mahogany. Um, and it's right up my street. Size is about 3 foot tall and about 3 foot wide guys. Okay guys. So as you can see that is the haul for today. I think I spent a bit more than I thought. Um, as I'm going through it and saying the prices, I think I'm not a million miles, somewhere between 150 and 200. Um, but genuinely, that optimal mirror is worth every penny of that on its own. Got to be, you know, got to be two to 300 pounds for an optimal mirror like that. You try and buy one. It's perfect size to go over somebody's fireplace or even in a bedroom. Um, as you know, I got a large, large house, and to be honest with you, I'm thinking really hard about mounting it above my fireplace. At the moment, I got a very modern uh, mirror with a topper, a carved topper. So I'm thinking very hard about swapping that out, selling the mirror I got in there for 10 or 20 quid, sell the topper for 20 quid, 30 quid, and keep in that Art Nouveau mirror. It's beautiful, I absolutely love it. Um, it needs no work doing to do it. Just take the two metal clips off the sides that would have mounted on the dressing table and literally a bit of piano wire for the strength and some screws into the mahogany and job done. Hang it up. It'll need a seriously strong hook to hold that on the wall. It is heavy guys. It's probably 20 kilos if not a bit more. Um, I, could, I could tell you why I can imagine the, the dresser that came off. It must have come from Liberties or something like that. To come with that quality um, to, and the size, it must have been a serious, beautiful piece of furniture. Art Nouveau period things are my favourite anyway. You've got Art Nouveau and you've got Art Deco. Some people get confused with the two. Art Nouveau is organic. Art Deco is geometric. So anything with leaves and tendrils and organic branches and things like that is all Art Nouveau and hearts and things. If you want Art Deco, it's all shapes, triangles, squares, bold colours. Um, and I actually love the Art Nouveau period. So that is right up my street. So that mirror is probably going to end up over my fireplace this week. And if it does, you will have a photo of it in situ. Um, as you know, I have a good mix of antique and modern in my home. Um, and yet again, I bought something of value that I'm going to keep. What can I say? It's part of the business. Um, one day I'll find a different mirror that I like and then I'll sell this one. That's what you do. You buy it, you love it for a bit and you pass it on. Um, I'd like to think I saved this from being smashed up and chewed up in the dump today. Three pound guys. Seriously, it was, well it just well have been free. Eight pound for a mirror like that. Um, Lovely character to it. I absolutely love it. So, there we have it. I don't know what you think of the buys. Uh, personally, I think I've had a stormer of a day. That's just one day's buying, guys. Um, got a lot of work to do. I've got a box full, ready packed now. Washed, cleaned, packed, ready to go down the shop tomorrow. I've got a box full there. It needs minor restoration. Um, and like the lamps rewiring and things. But other than that, it's ready to rock and roll, sell, get my money back and make a few quid and get back out then. I'm hoping to go Thursday. 
However, yet again, we are 25th of March and they forecast snow. This week we got heavy snow coming in again. So I don't know if I'm even going to be opening shop all week this week because I'm not going to sit down in the snow. Oh, excuse me. We live in um, the old mining towns of South Wales and the hills are like that. So the first bit of snow we have, we're all stranded and I'm not going to walk to the shop or go to the shop and have people, the only people I see are people who are desperate for bread and milk or a bit of food. I'm not doing this. So if the snow's down, I'm staying home and spend some time with the kids getting the sleds out. But I think that's about it for this film, guys. It's going to be a seriously long film. I um, hope you watched it all the way through. If you did, I hope you enjoyed it. It's some really nice bits of stock. It's some different stock from my usual. Uh, so it's nice to see a variety. If you did enjoy it, I would appreciate a like and a share, guys. Um, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Let me know you've subscribed and I'll give you a thumbs up. You can find me on my own website, antiquesarena.co.uk. You can find me on Facebook. I have a page and a group, Antiques Arena. And you can come and visit me in the shop, 78 Oxford Street, Mountain Ash, Charlie Foxtrot, 45, 3 Hotel Bravo. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> Bye for now.